guys! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to talk to you about bassoon warm-ups. Before we dive into a discussion of bassoon warm-ups, I do want to remind you though that we have Raffrey's t-shirts available only for the month of April on my website. If you are interested, you can go ahead and click the link in the description box down below and pick yours up today. Okay, let's talk about bassoon warm-ups. Now I have to admit that back in the day I was not the best at warming up. But I've since realized that maybe that's not the best idea, largely because I have seen the benefits in my own personal performing, but I've also seen the benefits in my students' bassoon playing as well. I've realized that warming up helps me center the breath before I start, helps me gauge whether or not the read is working the way that I intend it to, and also it helps me make sure that my setup is appropriately working. Do I have the wing joint into the bassoon properly so that the whisper key on the vocal is covered? Do I I have any pads that happen to be sticking and it also gives me a chance to make sure that none of the screws on my bassoon are starting to come loose and that there's extra play in the keys creating a wobbly sense of technique. For my students I have seen them grow leaps and bounds by doing warm-ups. It helps them work on their airspeed shifts so that they have a greater sense of intonation as well as facilitating dynamic contrast. I've also seen that it does help them with some of the basics of facilitating faster finger movement and keeping their fingers close to the keys, allowing for greater speed. Let's dig into my three favorite current warm-ups. Now, just in case you're curious, I will break these into beginner, intermediate, and advanced. But in actuality, I do the beginner, intermediate, and advanced on a daily basis in my own personal practice. For my beginners, I love to start them out on scales. I take them through the major scales, then the minor scales, and as well, I love to do a chromatic scale so that I know that there is never a note that they're going to bump into that they don't already know. By doing this, we're able to work on airspeed shifts, slow air for the low register, and fast air for the high register, while also building facility and technique. It also helps them to work on moving on and off the reed. I find that by taking less reed in the mouth for the low register, they have a greater sense of intonation, and taking a little bit more reed in the mouth for the high register, they also, again, build good intonation skills. For my more intermediate students, I love to work out of Chris Wyatt's bassoon warm-up book. My favorite two exercises that I do with my students as well as in my own personal practice are number seven and number 10. I love number seven and number 10 because they start with notes that are right next door. Then, as things become a little bit more advanced in the exercise, they begin to leap around. This, again, allows students to work on slow air for the low register and fast error for the upper register. Many of my students I have noted can sometimes end up a little bit flat in the upper register, largely because they're trying to use slower air for the low register but not engaging that air for the faster upper register. This is one of my favorite exercises to correct that. If the airspeed shifts that I'm speaking about are a little bit challenging for you, you might consider watching my balloons and bassoons video which covers this in detail. I've also found that as students work on dynamics in Wyatt's exercises, that then those dynamics that they have learned with phrasing can transcend into their sight reading as they are auditioning, but it can also come into play in pieces that we're working on in a lesson. Their solo literature, there is a natural innate tendency towards phrasing that occurs because they have been doing phrasing in their warm-ups. For my advanced players looking at building even greater technique, I love Simon Kovar's 24 daily exercises. My favorite are the legato, intonation, and facility. The upward downward slurs at such a fast speed in these Kovar exercises allow me to test the read. If the read does not want to do upward downward slurs, I know that I need to take more out of the channels. I also am allowed to work on the airspeed shifts and push into greater discussions of flicking versus venting because they are speed technique exercises when they go faster. As I have been discussing with many of my bassoon friends about warm-ups that I like to do on a daily basis, I did speak to Maya Stone. Maya Stone has written a great article on long tones. She has graciously allowed me to post this on my blog so that you can begin looking at long tone exercises as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna make sure you don't miss a future video, be sure to click that subscribe button and also be sure to check out those Raffreeds t-shirts. I will see you guys next time. Bye.